Our next uh, presenter is Kate Clute. She is a research fellow for the Centre for Rural Emergency Medicine based at Deakin University. And her presentation today is Cooperation, Not Competition, Understanding Collaborative Practice Between Rural Paramedics, Nurses and Doctors. Okay, I'm going to start off with painting a picture. It's 3am, an ambulance crew, one micro and one ALS paramedic, are travelling through Camperdown with an unwell myasthenia gravis patient being transferred to Geelong. Just east of town, the patient suddenly deteriorates. The decision is made to head to the hospital for a safer environment for intubation and to await arrival of HEMS. Upon arrival at the hospital, a team of the local doctor, two nurses and two paramedics is formed. They have never before worked together as a group. How these five people now collaborate can have a huge impact on this patient's outcome. In rural areas, critically ill patients can self-present to urgent and primary care centres, the good old let's drive in with a STEMI, or they may come in via ambulance for initial stabilisation before transfer. And you've also got the relatively stable patients who may rapidly deteriorate unexpectedly, requiring urgent arrangements for transfer via ambulance. These situations are very challenging for all the clinicians involved, the doctors, the nurses and the paramedics. Rural and remote areas often have very low numbers of any clinician group, so there may only be one or two GPs that live in town. The ambulance service may have a single officer branch with no one else living in town for backup and only a couple of nurses of varying mm -hmm. levels of experience are in the surrounding areas. As the patient is being prepared for transport to a larger facility either by road or by air, care must be shared by all of these clinicians. Different clinicians will have different knowledge about processes and guidelines used that are relevant to the patient care they provide. It's how the information is shared and the teamwork involved that will impact the patient's care and potentially their outcome. The Centre for Rural Emergency Medicine is conducting a study on the collaboration between paramedics, nurses and doctors in urgent and primary care centres and a review of literature on the topic was required. So the aim of this part of the project was to conduct a review of the available international literature related to various aspects of collaborative practice between paramedics, nurses and doctors. And this would then be used as the foundation of the collaborative practice project. So in order to acquire the relevant articles, a systematic search of a variety of databases was performed, including EBSCO, Medline, Sinal and Web of Science. No language or time limitations were placed on the initial search to get as many articles as possible. The search was conducted as a combination of profession, collaborative practice and emergency medicine using both keywords and mesh headings. And previously published strategies were utilised where they were available. Now when looking at professions, uh, we use terms such as physician, doctor, nurse, paramedic and emergency medical technician. Articles were retrieved based on any of these terms, so it wasn't a combination, just any of those ones. Collaborative practice also used the terms interprofessional relations, communication and cooperative behaviour. And emergency medicine included terms such as emergencies, emergency services, ambulances, emergency medicine, emergency departments, etc. These three main search areas that were then combined to retrieve uh, related articles. It was hoped to use rural practice as a search term to be more specific to the project, but unfortunately this didn't re uh, yield any relevant articles. The articles retrieved were then examined for relevance to the project. Any articles that looked only at intraprofessional collaboration, such as doctor and uh, specialist or nurse and nurse practitioner, were excluded. We wanted to look at collaboration between different clinician groups. Some non-English language articles were retrieved and the abstracts translated. However, <laughs> luckily, none of them were fully translated as none were deemed relevant, because that would have been a nightmare. The final relevant articles were then assessed for the main themes that they discussed. So we ended up with 792 articles and from these there were 70 articles that were deemed uh, relevant uh, to the project. Now from this there were 95% or 66 articles that discussed collaboration of doctors with either nurses or paramedics or both. 64 articles discussed collaboration of nurses with doctors or paramedics or both and 16 articles examine some form of paramedic collaboration with the nurses or doctors. Only six of the uh, 70 articles actually discussed collaboration of some form before between all three groups of clinicians. So from these articles, six main themes evolved. 
communication, information transfer, teamwork, attitudes and relationships, roles and skills and training. Within the theme of communication, some of the key findings included, and some of these aren't rocket science, um, an increase in feedback from other clinicians was likely to lead to increased collaboration. Difficulties in communication due to power conflicts can lead to decreased collaboration. That's the good old not agreeing on who's boss in the uh, medical team. And decreased communication can lead to a decreased community of care. And this leads into information transfer. The issues identified include included a lack of uniform communication patterns and timing of information transfer and multiple handovers uh, with problems relaying information and this is a particular um, issue that paramedics face when going through an ED department with uh, different people are handing over to. These issues present opportunities for error due to missing or fragmented patient information and then reduced accuracy. The teamwork aspects of collaboration interestingly showed that when clinicians had increased perceptions of autonomy, they also had increased levels of collaboration. This may be related to good leadership, which is also shown to link into good teamwork. And this then follows through to the attitudes and relationships of the team members. Trust kept coming up as a major factor in the ability of clinicians to collaborate during the formation of the emergency medical teams. The amount of information transferred the timing and how trusted the information is depends on the relationship formed over time between the clinicians. This can potentially be an issue when the new teams are formed and opinions are based on previous experiences with clinician groups. So it may not be the nurses or the doctors or the paramedics you've dealt with previously, but you've had a bad experience with somebody from that group and therefore you hold everybody accountable. Collaboration is also dependent on the trust that each member of the team can actually fulfill the assigned role of that, uh, of that clinician. And errors increase when there are increased interpersonal relationship failures. Communication reduces when there is a perception of reduced competence, whether or not this is true, and le that leads to reduced collaboration as previously mentioned. An important thing is breaking down perceived barriers between services can improve relationships, improve trust, and hopefully also improve <coughs> collaboration. Roles and skills were also an important theme. It was noted that recognising and respecting each other's roles and efforts greatly improved collaborative efforts. Co conversely, collaboration decreased when clinicians had not worked together before and were unsure as to each other's skill levels. There were not clear roles or reporting relationships and there was a lack of understanding of other clinicians' roles and expectations, especially a patient handover. Education or training related to knowledge of other clinician groups may help improve this. Training is seen as an important aspect in improving collaboration, but not only in the clinical skills. No techs or non-technical skills are being recognised as an important element of collaboration. Various communication models, such as SBAR, which is Situation Background Assessment Recommendation, Crew Resource Management, Closed Loop Communication Techniques, and DESK, describe, express concerns, suggest alternatives and consider the consequences, have been described and studied as having the potential to increase team performance during medical emergencies, although most of these involve dedicated or known teams rather than the ad hoc teams that are more likely in the urgent care environment. Adding no text training to education on the roles and skills of others has the potential to greatly improve the collaboration between the groups. In summary, the vast majority of research collated examines doctor-nurse collaboration. Issues relating to communication, teamwork, attitudes and training were the most commonly identified themes. In rural and remote areas, it is important to also recognise that paramedics form part of the emergency medical team, especially due to the reduced availability of clinicians. The Centre for Rural Emergency Medicine's project will examine paramedic, nurse and doctor collaboration in the region to understand and hopefully enhance this important skill.